This is the beginning. The fourth season for Michael Jordan playing for the Chicago Bulls was also the first season of him playing with Scottie Pippen. Michael was only 24 years old when Scottie Pippen joined him on the Bulls. Pippen wasn't drafted by the Chicago Bulls, but by the Seattle Supersonics, who used a pick they got from the New York Knicks. The Seattle Supersonics select Scott Pippen of Central Arkansas. Seattle traded Pippen to the Bulls for Olden Polonies, and that was the move that was needed for the Bulls to have the beginning of their ultimate duo. Pippen, unfortunately, didn't come in as this super player. Among this cast of characters are men like forward Charles Oakley, the team's ever-present jovial enforcer. Michael Jordan was coming off the highest scoring season as he averaged 37 points per game the season before. Even though Scotty came into the NBA, he was nowhere close to the guy that would end up being the Robin to Jordan's Batman. Jordan that season still had to score a huge majority of the points and finished the season with a 35 point per game average and 6 assists. No one could have any idea what kind of season Michael Jordan was about to have. He had very limited support as Charles Oakley was the best scorer after him with 12 points per game and if anyone knows Charles Oakley's game then you know how limited of a player offensively he was. Pippen and Horace Grant both only averaged 7.9 points and 7.7 .7 points respectively as they were rookies that season for the Bulls. The Bulls, thanks mostly to Jordan, overall still managed to increase their win total from 40 to 50 games, so the team improvement was definitely there. Michael won the MVP that year as well as the Defensive Player of the Year. Michael, nobody does it better. Congratulations to you from Edge and from your fans all over the country. I think a lot of gratitude have to go out to my teammates and my coaching staff and, and the fans of Chicago. I think without them, I couldn't accomplish the feats that I did. And hopefully we can come back and do the same thing next year and, and improve our record and do better in the playoffs and to have all around better season next season. Thanks a lot. So he played all out on both ends of the floor without taking possessions off like some current players do. He was an absolute menace on both ends of the court and no one had been able to find an answer for him. Jordan didn't need Pippen to become the Jordan we know, the GOAT, but Pippen needed Michael Jordan to become the Pippen we know from the championship Bulls teams. Pippen himself, as well as his teammates, directly say that Michael Jordan is fully responsible for Scottie Pippen becoming the Scottie Pippen that won titles with Jordan and the Bulls. Michael was on us. No mistakes allowed. He taught me how to stay in the gym and he spent a lot of time starting to build the confidence that I needed. Pippen became my focal point. More than any other player, Scottie benefited from playing with Michael Jordan because Scottie had this raw athletic ability. What he didn't have was what Michael brought every day, which was the drive to be the very best every single day. The mental focus of the game. Meanwhile, the 87-88 season was by far the most dominating season by a player in the era of hard defense. You can have total stats due to years you have played no problem, but there's very little chance of anyone topping this feat. Michael Jordan won every award and had an impressive stat line. He was the MVP for that season. He was the Defensive Player of the Year that season. He was the Scoring Champion that season. He was the All-Star MVP that season. He won the Dunk Contest that season. He was the Steals Leader for that season with 259 steals. Had 4 games of over 50 points. 18 games of over 40 points and over 100 blocks as well. The 1987-88 NBA season was the most impressive season by an NBA player individually ever. Even though Michael put in so much effort and won those awards and led in almost every category, he managed to play every single game that season, which rarely happens today. 
He also managed to lead the NBA in minutes per game with just over 40 a night. During the playoffs, the Chicago Bulls finally broke the curse as they won their first playoff series during the Michael Jordan era. Critics today claim that MJ did not win a series until Scottie Pippen arrived, but Pippen was a puppy at this time and averaged 10 points per game and played around 20 minutes. If we look at the games, it's clear that Michael took it to another level during the five-game series against the Cleveland Cavaliers. Jordan's average was 45 points a game, while the second leading scorer on the team was Charles Oakley at just under 11 points. A victory over the Cavaliers meant the Bulls would face off against the Detroit Pistons, which was the start of what is known today as one of the greatest rivalries in sports history. The Bulls would lose the series in five games with Michael averaging over 27 points and nearly nine rebounds per game, but the Pistons proved to be too much for Chicago. Michael and the Bulls had more work to do. You've had time now to reflect on the season. What will you remember most about this past year so great season for you? Well, I think it's just the way that the team came together and although we didn't look as good as most teams did on, uh, on paper, uh, we really went out and played hard and accomplished a lot of feats that a lot of people didn't think we could accomplish. And individually, I think it, it helped me uh, show all around talent that I felt that I had. And my teammates had a lot to do with that. It has to be a frustrating feeling to sit here and watch the, the two teams playing the playoffs despite the fact you had the great year. What's missing from the Bulls that will get you above the, up to the next level? I think our uh, primary uh, goal is to get another score uh, because I think that most teams play against us uh, really feel they have to stop me to, to stop the Chicago Bulls. And once we feel that we can get another score who can take up that, that leadership and that score, scoring, I think it's going to make us a much better team. You've been the NBA scoring champion the last two years. You wouldn't mind relinquishing some of that no, role? No, I wouldn't mind. If you're going to get more wins and, and accomplish more feats uh, as a team, I think all the individual accolades that I've captured at this time, uh, I can render some of the things for uh, some of those uh, accolades for other players. Okay. You, you always want to play well for the fans. You know the expectation is going to be there, and uh, you just want to go out and play hard. I feel that you know, the way I play and the creativity that I have in my game, if I just play naturally, then uh, all the people are pleased. I think the cheers here are going to be more or less towards the Chicago Bulls and, and to the game of basketball and somewhat to myself. And I'm appreciate that. I think it's appreciation for the way that I play and my personality and the way I'm perceived by the fans. And I think it's just going to continue to make me a better ball player.